Turn with me in your Bibles, Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3. We are working our way through the book of Colossians, and we're almost three-fourths done with it. (laughs) And we've been looking at verses 12 through 17 for a a few weeks, (laughs) and uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing to move on from this section, but it's been a really, really good section in that it shows us what Christ's likeness it really entails. And so we're looking at Colossians 3, verses 17, or 13, 12 through 17, but we're really going to concentrate on the last part of verse number 17. Verse number 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, notice this, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on our message today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your word. We know that in your word is truth. We know that you have inspired your word. It, you breathed out your word for us to know who you are and what to do. And Father, we ask you today to teach our hearts. To help us, even though times are, are hard right now, we ask you to encourage us through your word. And if there's anybody here that is not saved, may you show them Christ. And may they get saved today. Father, help me as I speak and bring forth the message. May it be exactly what you want me to bring forth. Help us to hear with the ears that we have, spiritual heart, and may we take in your word. I do ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love the fall. Amen. That is my favorite season of all the seasons that we have, especially in Florida. You might say, hey, we're in Florida. We only have two seasons, hot and hotter. (laughs) Not true. Not true. I have lived my almost my entire life in Florida. Since I was 12 years old, I have lived in Florida, and I've lived in every single region of Florida, maybe not the northeast, but definitely the panhandle, and so I have lived in South Florida, if you think it's hot here, whoa, (laughs) you don't really know what hot is until you go down south to South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, it is brutally hot, you go outside, you start sweating immediately. Here you have to warm up for it. But, uh, but then I lived uh, some years in Pensacola, getting my, my undergrad degree and as well as my master's. And there, oh, the winters, it's cold. <laughs> you might say, well, it's Florida. It can't be cold. It was cold. But it, at times you go outside and, wow, it was freezing. And uh, lo and behold, I had to work early in the morning. I would go out to my car and, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to, Okay, get to work on time and everything will be good. And I looked at the car and I'm like, oh, there's ice on the car. Okay, um, I don't have an ice scraper like those that are up north. So I'm like, okay, let me think. Um, okay, water, that should do it. So I go inside, I get a cup of water. I go outside, I throw it on the windshield. I'm like, okay, that did something. And so I go back inside, get some more water. By the time I got back out, it had refroze. And so I thought to myself, well, this is no good. Uh, I have learned from them that that's probably not the best idea. Uh, or it's better to have it running uh, for a while, defrost it, 
And uh, then eventually, one time I, I tried that and it didn't defrost. I'm thinking, what is wrong with my car? Well, the button for defrost was not pushed. <laughs> but I love the fall. It's not cold here. Uh, it's nice and cool in the mornings. You go outside and the feeling is, oh, it's different. It's a little brisker. It's a little nicer. And I love the fact that, okay, it doesn't rain much. And so my grass could be left alone. I don't have to mow it all the time. Uh, and so right now my grass is nice and crunchy. I, I, you know, my parents came in town yesterday and I just went out to see them. And I felt the grass. I'm like, ooh, crunchy grass. I like this. This is great. I love the fall. It is, it's great. I learned something new when I went back to South Lake Hospital about the fall. And uh, because they said a word that I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because we're going to have this big, big thing that we had Friday. And we're going to get 60 dozen donuts. Boy, everybody was sugared up that day uh, <laughs> at South Lake Hospital. It's for the entire employees of the hospital. And then my director said, yeah, and we're also going to have wassail. What? <laughs> what is that? We're going to have some wassail. Okay, that didn't answer my question. What is that? It's wassail. Okay, what is that? And they said, well, it's apple cider mixed with a lot of spices and, and it's served hot. And, and it, well, it's like, okay, that sounds good. But it's even funner. It's funner. More fun to say. I always get tripped up by that one. It's more fun to say wassail. You know? So on Friday, we had our, our time of uh, employees, and so we got, I got the boxes of donuts, I got my thing of wassail, and uh, my director said, okay, you're, you're the one to distribute it to our, our food service. I'm like, all right, no problem. So I go in, and I said, who wants some wassail? And uh, everybody's looking at me kind of funny. You want some wassail? What is that? And then so I explained it, and it was a fun time. I, I love to say the word wassail. I just, that's really funny to me. Uh, so the fall, it, it's a wonderful time. And one thing that I look forward to especially is in November, of course, is Thanksgiving. I'm not going to start talking about food because it's the beginning of my sermon. And I don't need you to think about, man, I'm really looking forward to lunch. But Thanksgiving is a great time because of the fact that, well, it's one of those uh, th holidays that we have that has not been quite too much tainted by the things of this world. Like Christmas, I, I'm not really excited for Christmas on one hand because I know, okay, it's all about Santa Claus for the world around me. And if I say, I don't teach my kids Santa Claus, they kind of, wow, child abuse. You know, that's, that's terrible. One person actually came to me and asked me, terrible thing. I said something about Santa Claus to your kids and they said, we don't believe in Santa Claus. It was like the worst thing ever to this person. I'm thinking, yeah, Santa Claus isn't the reason for the season. It's Christ. And so all these different things about certain holidays, yeah, they're fun. They're, you know, the gifts, the tree, the, the decorations. My wife tells me that we're going to put lights on, on the house that we just bought. <clears throat> we'll see. <laughs> uh, but, but in all reality, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays because it's a time to be thankful for the things that you have. It's not time for, okay, I want to get, 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 get. That's next day, Black Friday, which who knows? With coronavirus, I've heard that Black Friday has been canceled, but I don't know. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, but yet Thanksgiving, you should be thankful for all that you have. But on the other hand, if you're going to be thankful, you need to be thankful to someone. It's like my wife does something special for me. I'm thankful for that she did something like making me a, a wonderful breakfast, you know, French toast and eggs. and Okay, um, stop talking about food. But the thing about it is that we are thankful for something, but really we're thankful to someone for what they have done for us. And over and over and over again, for us as Christians, we need to be thankful to God. Over and over again. That's a wonderful way of witnessing to somebody. Uh, at work, I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving a little bit. And Mike open the door for are you thankful to someone not just for something and so it might be giving me an opportunity to do that the greatest day i found to witness is saint patrick's day that's right it's saint patrick's day because they have because i say to them man this is my favorite holiday and they all look at me like i'm crazy why is saint patrick your favorite holiday i'm like here's the story of saint patrick he was a person that got into bondage, 
but became a slave to the Irish. He's not originally Irish. He's actually British. So he became a slave to the Irish. Then he escaped. He found Christ, forgave the Irish, went back to them as a missionary. I love the story of St. Patrick. I love it. So being thankful, we'll get back on to Thanksgiving here. Being thankful is what we need to be as Christians. And so we see here in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 17, I'm just going to read the whole verse. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So we're going to look at today, really the book of Colossians, to see where we have been, to say what things should we, on a regular basis, be thankful for, even though at times we go through a lot of trials in life. You know, since I got saved, I've had probably more trials after I got saved than before. Because I didn't have to worry about uh, the different things uh, of, the, of being good rather than, okay, I, I need to do what God wants me to do. I need to pray as I should. I need to read the Bible. I need, I need to memorize God's word in my heart so I'm not sinning against Him. All these different things I didn't care a lick about before I got saved. So a lot of things happen after I got saved, and I've been saved for 21, almost 22 years now. And so with all that to say, we need to be thankful even in the times of trials, even in times of tribulation, we ought to be thankful to God. And here are three different subjects that we're going to need to look at today to remind ourselves to be thankful to God over. First of all, number one is to thank thankful to God by Christ for the simplicity in salvation. For simplicity in salvation. Turn with me to Colossians chapter number one. We're going to be at... Colossians chapter number 1 for this first point. We're going to be looking at three, verse number 3, verse number 8 through that. And so we say, we give thanks, verse number 3, to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, bringing forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth, as ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in your and the spirit so we see right here it reminds us colossians chapter one the fact is that one day somebody came to town in colossi somebody preached the gospel to those in colossi people responded to the gospel and got saved amen the simplicity that's in salvation it's 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 not hard to truly understand it's really not that difficult now, people can make it very difficult. If you really wanted to, if you want to show how educated you are, you can be very, very long-winded and very robust about the language that you use. You say to somebody, hey, do you want to be justified by the blood of the, uh, atoning, you know, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Uh, do you want the sanctification of the Spirit? And, and you go into detail with this. Uh, do you want the glorification that God has for you? And, and all these different things. You can be very verbose about salvation if you're very educated. And I keep on mis saying that word. Yes, I understand. It's, a, uh, <laughs> it's what I'm used to do. It's so it's fun. But here's the thing about it is that salvation is very simple. Very simple. Here it is. Everybody in this world... Okay, let me start with God. God made the world. God is good. Man chose evil rather than good. Man then is evil that point on. Man needs a payment of the sin that they did. And here's the thing. The wages of sin is death. That means that every single person that's born into this world does wrong automatically. And God did everything for us that we might be made right in God's eyes. 
Nothing that we could ever have done. No good works that we could have done. Over and over again, if we try to be good, we just show how bad we are because we are sinners by nature and that's really what we crave is sin. To fulfill the lust of the flesh. But here's the thing about it. God loved us so much that He sent His Son into the world, died in our place. So that means... All the sin that I have ever done or will ever do was placed upon Jesus Christ. And he died in my place. The perfect, spotless Lamb of God. He put all of our sins on himself at that very moment and died on our behalf. Showing forth the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, you will get God's righteousness placed upon you. What a deal. Because your sin was placed upon Him. He can rightly forgive you of all the things that you have ever done and will ever do. And give you life. Life eternal. What a great deal. It's like going to somebody and saying, okay, I I see that you have a terrible disease. That you are going to die if this disease is not cured. And guess what? Here's the cure. (laughs) Do you think the person will like the cure of this terrible disease? Well, of course. To see and show that the wages of sin, that the sin itself is the worst thing that we have in us is the number one thing that a person must do in order to show forth what salvation is. Otherwise, today you have a lot of people saying, oh, just accept Jesus, accept Jesus, accept Jesus, and your life will be better, and you're going to have peace, you're going to have love, you're going to have all these different things. It's true if you put your faith in Jesus Christ that you will get those things as the fruit of the Spirit, but that's not the... That that's not the uh, motive of how why we get saved. It's the fact that I am lost, I am blind, I am dead in my trespasses and sins, and if that doesn't correct itself, I'm going to die and go into the lake of fire to pay for all my sins for all eternity. It's serious. But the grace of God given through Jesus Christ, we put our faith in Jesus, we get his righteousness. Oh, it's amazing. We get the forgiveness of sins. Before God, I know how much of a wretched sinner I am, only a little bit. God knows everything. But yet before God, He sees me and He sees Christ. That's because when He saw Christ 2,000 years ago, He saw me. Amazing. The simplicity of the Gospel. Praise the Lord that at one point in time, You and I were in that lost condition and then somebody told us about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord that He sent somebody in your way. I don't know how many people it took to, to have me see what the Gospel was and understand quite significantly that it's for me. All my life long, I was at church. I, I, I was at church every time that my my. Parents were, I were there. Uh, I probably wasn't in the right place at times because I would sneak off and do my own thing, uh, but they didn't know that until right now. (laughs) But that's okay. Um, But yet, all my life long, I heard Jesus. I heard Jesus died for me. I I heard that over and over and over again. I saw the Jesus movie from the 1980s. I think it's 1980s, 1970s, that Jesus of Nazareth movie. I saw that every single year for Christ, for Easter. I saw that every single year. I could quote it. You know, I, I had you know times with my mom and my brother as we went through the Bible and we talked about it before we went to school. I understood all that. I had Sunday school teachers. I had youth pastors. I had pastors tell me the good news about Jesus Christ. And then one day, I accepted it. Praise the Lord. I was 12 years old. I was in public school. I was in the middle of a computer lab, ready to go home. And then all of a sudden, I understood the gospel. It, the light flickered and it turned on. I'm like, oh, Jesus died for me. He didn't just die for the entire world. He died for me. 
I have to accept him. All along, I knew Jesus died for the world. I knew Jesus died for sins. I knew everything about that. Jesus died for me. And I personally received him as my own personal Savior. I got saved that day. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for the simplicity that's in salvation that any person, whether little child or old adult, can get saved. And as long as they are living, there is still hope. And so we see the simplicity. We need to thank God by Jesus Christ that the simplicity of the salvation. But secondly, number two, not only that, but be thankful to God in Christ for the reality of redemption and reconciliation. Now, those are some big words here. Notice with me in verse number 12 of chapter 1. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be the partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Boy, that's a lot of... (laughs) What does that mean? (laughs) Now, we went through this once before, uh, but understand that at one point in time, we as specifically Gentiles... Those Jews that understood the gospel got saved. Now they're going into the world to to teach the Gentiles how to be saved. Now us Gentiles, I don't know if anybody here is Jewish. I am not, as I found out through my DNA study through uh, Ancestry.com, if it is correct. Who knows? They might have a sheet in front of them, bubble gum, and just, you know, (laughs) you are, okay, yeah, you are from, you're from Antarctica. Well, that's not helpful, you know. Uh, but yet we are meet to be partakers of the inheritance. The inheritance there is Jesus Christ himself and uh, with the saints in light. So we have Jesus Christ. Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Praise the Lord. What that means is no longer am I under the power of Satan. No longer am I under the God of this world. But rather, I am now transported, translated into a new kingdom with a new ruler, with a new set of values, with new everything. I'm in the kingdom of His dear Son. Praise the Lord. This is what happened when Jesus did what He did for us. That he made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. If we don't have redemption, then we are not saved. Redemption is, here, here's what redemption is, okay? You had a debt, somebody paid your debt. He redeemed you. We had the debt of the wages of sin on our life. Jesus Christ died and spilt his blood so he could pay for our sin. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So he had to die in our place, shed his blood, and now he gives us that and the forgiveness of sin is ours. Praise the Lord for redemption. Ah, oh, amazing. So there are so many things we can point to here in this text. In verse number 15, who is the... Okay, so verse 15 through 20, it talks about him as God of gods, and he became man. Notice with me, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him, that's Jesus Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers, All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is head of the body, the church, which who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and all things he might have the preeminence. He is above all, he is God. But notice with me the next two verses. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, fully God, and having made peace through the blood of of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven so once again we have god from eternity past come into the world that's called the incarnation christmas amen we're going to christmas time he came into the world and he it said emptied himself made himself of no reputation He became just like a man. Though fully God, fully man, he grew up 
and he lived a perfect life. And perfect, holy, righteous God died on our behalf. Uh, it was just amazing learning about uh, in Sunday school class, and a lot of things have come up with Sunday school class. Really great, great things. And I got to thinking, because the question was, can, was God ever born? And the answer, of course, is no. He never, ever had a time that he didn't exist. But then thinking about Jesus, well, yeah, God the Son became flesh. He was born. The, the conundrum of, of who God is. And then, and then can God die? And I, of course the answer is no. He cannot cease to exist. But then you have Jesus being God the Son came into the world in flesh and what did He do? He died. Amazing. Without Jesus Christ, man would be hopeless and God would need to be just. But because Jesus came in, God can be also just and also gracious in one person, and he died for all of our sins. Praise the Lord. We need to thank the Lord over and over and over. If we ever forget, if we're ever not marveling over the fact that he came to save us from, a, from an eternity without God, eternity uh, with the wrath of God, eternity paying for our own sins. Praise God! I don't have to worry about that. I can go to heaven and I'll be before, before the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of all things, and He will recreate all things for the new heaven and the new earth. And guess what? This world, though beautiful as it is, is nothing in comparison to what we have to look forward to there. It's amazing. It's amazing what Christ has done for us. Now, if you notice with me in chapter 2 now, chapter 2 has another idea along with this. We're going to start in verse number 13 of chapter 2. And you, it's talking about the Colossian church, but yet all of us. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, that's Jesus Christ, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Notice this. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he gave, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the one that triumphed over the grave, triumphed over Satan. He triumphed over this world. Everything that he did was in victory. And now we can share in his victory. Thanks be to God. So we see, number one, that we need to be thankful to God because of the simplicity of salvation, but also thanks in the reality of redemption and reconciliation. But notice number three, thankful to God and Christ for the delight in discipleship. Delight in discipleship. Turn with me to chapter 3. Before we get into the text, discipleship is a very interesting word. The first part of it, the root word of it, is that of discipline. How many of us like to be disciplined about stuff? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't really want to be disciplined. That sounds bad. You know, If you do certain things, oh, you'll be disciplined you'll be written up now as the manager of my area i am now uh, i have to make people accountable therefore i have the power to write them up and with the uh it's, this is really interesting that it happened right now that i came back next month it's going to start a new attendance policy <laughs> i might be hiring a lot more people <laughs> uh, because my people, I know them, and they cannot do attendance very well. So hopefully they shape up or they're going to ship out. So interesting enough. But think about discipline. You could do really anything that you put your mind to as long as you're disciplined about it. For instance, if you want a, to try a new hobby, learn a new language. I try to learn Spanish. I wasn't disciplined about it, so I did not learn that language. Uh, another thing that I'm not disciplined, though I should be very disciplined about, is exercise. Uh, for, as you can tell, I am a very round, well-rounded individual. Um, in fact, one person recently uh, looked at me very seriously, like, "You know, you have not gained, or you have not uh, lost 
anything since you went back to work. I'm like, yeah, I, I know, I know. I'm in the process. But really, I have no excuse because I have all the head knowledge I ever need to work out. Oh, I have looked up workout routines. I, have, I'm, I know exactly what to do. I know how hard I should, should do three times a week or, or how many hours or how many minutes or whatever. I know what I need to do. But I'm not disciplined in order to do it. <laughs> As uh, I'm sure that some of you uh, might attest to in your own life. But yet, a disciplined life. For us as Christians, we need a disciplined life. And that's what we should have in chapter 3. It's all about what we should be doing now. In verse number 1, I love these verses. I'm just going to read them. If ye then be risen with Christ, praise the Lord, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. I love that. Don't set your affection on the things that will perish. Don't set your affection on things that won't matter for eternity. Put your eyes to Jesus Christ, who is raised on the right hand of the Father. He is risen with Christ. We all are, if we're in Christ, seek those things which are above where He sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection of, affection of things above, not on things of the earth. I have to read the next two verses because these verses are my, one of my favorite verses in Colossians. Just bear with me. All right, verse number three. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Praise the Lord. I'm going to appear with him in glory when he returns. Praise the Lord. But now here's the things that we ought to do because of that. Because of the reality that Jesus Christ will come back. Here's what we ought to do. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, nor an affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, all of these I have gone through. If you want to know what I have said about this, look it up on YouTube, Chapel Baptist Church in Claremont, and you have all the recent videos, and this is part of it. Uh, verse number seven. In the which also ye are, ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now, I love it, ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye, that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Notice with me in verse number 12 now. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. All these different things, it's really for our good. Every single thing that God commands us in his word and what we just read, it's all for our good. If we let sin reign in our mortal bodies, if we're in Christ, we shouldn't let that happen. We're beyond that. But yeah, a lot of times we look at the things that we used to do. Boy, that looks kind of appealing. Boy, that looks really good. I think to myself of, of buffets. You know? <laughs> buffets are interesting places to go, especially now with uh, COVID and everything. They're all shut down or, or some are active, but whatever. But yeah, look at the things that uh, you should have. You know, you got the salad bar, you got all the good for you foods, you got all the vegetables and all that. I don't want that. I want the un good for you stuff. <laughs> I want the pizza. I want uh, oh, I want the ice cream as much as you can eat. But that's not good. See, it's an interesting thing. Automatically, we want that which is not good for us. That's the old nature. But now we're renewed in the image of Christ. These things need to be the new reality in our lives. We need to be disciplined in these things. Now, this is not the sermon to, to condemn anybody that has not been perfect because none of us are perfect. Amen. Especially me, most of all, in my mind. Because I know exactly what I do. I don't know what you do. <laughs> I know what I do and how bad I am. Um, but reality, we're not perfect, but God is good. He can help us to get there. 
Now, we'll never be perfect this side of eternity, but the closer and closer we are with Christ, closer and closer we are with God, closer and closer we are to what God's Word says, better off we are. Better off in eternity we will be. But here's the thing that we should think of. Thank the Lord for the simple salvation. Praise God. Thank the Lord for all that he did. Now, the simplicity of salvation is only the tip of the iceberg about what Jesus really did for us and everything that he had to undergo. But here's the thing about it. We need to be thankful for all the possibilities that we can be like Christ. Be thankful. We have the ability through the Holy Spirit to do that. Be thankful. Be thankful. I'm sure that some of us, you would say, well, I have not been totally thankful during this time. Maybe there's a lot of tribulation in your life. Everybody has their own pain, their own sorrow. But maybe it's a good time today to just reflect about being thankful to God. For God has been good. He lets us live. He has given us everything that we need in Christ. So praise the Lord. So maybe we should just dedicate ourselves to to be more thankful in our days. Uh, If there's anybody here that is not saved, I I want you and implore you. If there's anybody here that is not saved, you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, do it today. Receive Him today. This is the greatest time to do it is now. Now is the time. You do not know what will happen to you after you leave these, this building. Do it today. I'll ask Wanda if she, she would come. Where are you at? There you are. She usually sits over there. Now she's over here. Okay. So I'll ask Wanda to come and just play a hymn for us. And then we have time of, of praying and just dedicating ourselves to be more thankful. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us to think on your word. And Father, for those of us that have been convicted about the lack of thanksgiving that we give to you, may we decide today to be more thankful. Help us to decide today to think about you more and more. Help us to choose you over the things of this world. Bless this time of prayer, I do pray. Father, we thank you for this time. And Father, help us to be more and more thankful. Help us to understand your word more. May we put that in our lives more and more and more so that our minds can be stayed about who you are and how good you have been to us. Help us not to focus on the things of this world, the tribulations that come our way. Yes, they will happen, but yet greater are you who can get us through it. Greater are you and and all the things that you have given us in order to be patient. We thank you for the fact is that we can be more like Christ every single day as we submit to you. Help us to do so. Father, may you bless each person here and truly help us to live for you each and every day. I do pray. In Jesus' name, amen.